Most people think there is no way to make a seven layer dip that's actually healthy because the normal ones are full of gringo garbage like cheese and sour cream and a bunch of junk. But what if I tell you we could make a really healthy one that's so flavorful and rich thanks to real food ingredients? Let's do it right now. Hey everybody, this is Dylan. And Reeves. You know I'm all about making videos that help you to simplify your healthy whole plant food diet so that you aren't worrying about all these little minute tiny things. Just eat healthy food and you'll be fine. Follow my recipes, that is the key. We are making a really healthy and delicious seven layer dip today. You thought it couldn't be done, but it can be done. We're gonna be playing with some avocados. We're gonna make a cheese sauce. We're gonna make some really simple refried beans that you don't even have to cook. This dish is no poblano. So with that, let's get right to it, shall we? If you're new to our channel, this recipe is from our very first cookbook, actually, our Well Your World Favorites Volume 1. You should get it. We have a lot of Mexican recipes also in our YouTube Favorites Volume 1 cookbook, so check those out. But today, I am giving this seven layer dip recipe away to you for free. I hope you'll love it and then go buy our books. Honestly, I need a level with you. This is the best recipe you're gonna have all week that you will even see on YouTube. It is so, so good and very easy to make. You can make this totally SOS free. No added salt, oil, or sugar. Sugar, three of the worst things that we get way, way too much of. We are gonna play with some olives. They have salt, but you don't have to use the olives if you don't want to. First things first, let's make a really simple refried beans. You don't even have to recook these. We're using canned beans. Try to find the no salt added because there's way too much salt in canned foods. I have two cans of pinto beans here. You could do this with black beans too if you prefer. We're throwing them right into the food processor. La di da. That was easy. I also will tell you we have an Instant Pot refried beans recipe you could check out that is great for this recipe. I'm showing you the really cut and dry, easy, fast version, but that is an amazing recipe you can make with whole dry beans, no soak. We got the beans in, we need to add some flavoring. For the really fast version, just throw in a tablespoon or two of our Fiesta blend. But don't worry, if you don't have our Fiesta blend, you can throw in some cumin, some oregano, and chili powder. We're gonna essentially add some veggie broth. I'm gonna use our veggie broth mix, and then we can just add a little bit of water. Maybe I'll throw in a half a teaspoon, a teaspoon, whatever, of our veggie broth mix. Add enough water to where it blends nice and creamy. Okay, there you saw it starts moving around real fast right when you get the, enough liquid in there. Now let it roll for maybe a half a minute until it's nice and smooth. Okay. Will you give me the dish on the dish? Okay. Which one of these do you think is going to be better for this seven layer dip? You, we need the depth. That's what I'm trying to tell you right now. This is actually just a regular old Tupperware kind of container. It has a lid, which is handy if you're going to transport this to a party. This kind of dish, I have done it, but it doesn't work very well because your layers have to be really thin. It's too shallow. That's you like need... a three layer dip. Yeah, max. Let's take our beans and we're just going right into the dish. Flatten it out evenly. Looks like a nice thin layer. Oh, are we going to fill this thing? Yes, it's going to be full. I'm always tempted to buy the fat-free refried beans, but they're loaded with salt. I have a can. Because it's offensive how much salt they put in this, that's 1,600 and we're using two cans. So you'd have over 3,200 milligrams of sodium if you use two cans of like the Trader Joe's fat-free refried beans. That's why you should make your own. Look how fast that was. Just beans and our Fiesta Fire Blend. Plus it's cheaper. This stuff's more expensive. Guess how much sodium is in this? Five milligrams in a serving. Five. It's essentially zero. And that's naturally occurring. So this is gonna be much better. If you want some salt, sprinkle it in yourself. You could have added it to the beans, you could add it to the stuff we're gonna make next. Layer number two is guacamole, but we're also making pico. All guacamole is is avocados with pico mixed in. At least it is for me. We're gonna make the pico from scratch, but the avocado, you could just mash it up and put it in as a layer. What do you think of that shortcut? Oh, I love it. Oh, good. So take out the seed, and then I just use a regular old kitchen spoon to take out the meat of this avocado. And this layer can be as thick or as thin as you want. You can just use a really thin layer of avocado or you can use a few avocados and make a, a bit of a thicker layer. This is really what's gonna add a lot of richness to this dish because this is where the fat is. There it is, a few avocados. You don't need to pulverize this, just make it spreadable so that when you dig in with your chips, you're not gonna like pull out an entire half of an avocado, you know what I mean? Yeah. Layer number two. Going in, here we go. If you wanna really master the art of the seven layer dip, try to get it spread nice and evenly without smashing one layer into the other. Since when are you the Instagram artist? It's about the bite. You gotta get that bite right. We'll just use a knife and lightly spread it around. If you're trying to avoid fat and making this really low fat, you can leave the avocado out. Believe me, it is still going to be exceptionally tasty. 
with pico and beans and all the other stuff you're about to find out about. You can tell my avocado sunk into the beans a little. We're gonna get through this, okay? Here, number three. Pico, and it's gotta be homemade. I mean, you can get it at the store if you want to, but it's gonna have a lot of added salt. Make your pico from scratch, it's really fast. Let me show you how fast it can be. Normally I do this with Roma tomatoes. You've seen me core a Roma tomato, but two stores today, we're out of Roma tomatoes. So we're gonna use the regular tomato, so I'll show you how I do it. See how there's a lot of seeds in there. That makes for a really wet pico. So take this half, cut it into quarters, so now you have a wedge. We're gonna cut this little piece of stem off, right? So that's gone. Cut through this little wedge, and you can get this little core and seed stuff out. That's the stuff that's gonna make for a watery pico. You want it to be a little less watery. Then cut it into strips as thick as you want your little pieces of tomato to be. Cut them up like that, and you've got a nice dry core tomato where you've just kept the meat of the tomato boom so let's do that for a few tomatoes and fast forward we'll meet you back here for the next step that's three tomatoes in the tank. I'm gonna use some red onion. You can use yellow onion too. We aren't gonna need too much. I had one open in the fridge, that's cool. We'll just chop this up. I like my red onion a little bit on the smaller side, so you can kinda line it up and chop through it of red onion to go with our three big tomatoes. How do you know what kind of ratio to do for your pico? Eventually, you've made it a few times, you just look at it and the colors are right, and you just know. When you're starting, do what I did. Three of the big tomatoes, a little handful of red onion. Let's see. Am Am I gonna use both these? I don't know if I'm gonna use both these jalapenos yet until I see it start to go in. So I take the top off, then I'll just kind of slice around the core to get all of the flesh off of there. And then this is trashola. Now we've got all these pieces of jalapeno, so we're gonna strip them into nice little thin strips. Honestly, I'm starting to change my mind and feel like this is the right amount. Next up for a homemade pico is a little cilantro. So chop it up. This looks good to me. It's about a handful. Boom. Next up, some limes. Let's start with two of these little baby limes, and we'll see if that seems like enough. Throw it in your little squeezer. Boom. There's one half. I'm gonna go with two limes. Very non-traditional to put garlic in your pico de gallo, but I love it. And I'm not putting a bunch of salt in there, so I want a little bit more pizzazz. So I love to throw in a little bit of minced cheater garlic from Costco. It may seem like a lot of garlic, but it's not, because it's for the whole dish. That, for me, is the perfect pico. Okay, we're gonna go for all of it. Push it down, okay? Mix your layers a little. I was afraid of it at the beginning, but it's necessary. I can see we're not gonna get away. I told you this thing's gotta be full. Layer number three. Layer number three, pico de gallo. The rest of these layers are pretty simple. We're just gonna do a little chopping. Not this, though. This is corn. I've got a can of corn, no salt added. You could use the char-roasted corn from Trader Joe's that we love. Regular old bag of frozen corn whatever you want to let it thaw if you're gonna be serving this right away otherwise it doesn't matter that much sprinkle on what however thick a layer of corn you desire that looks pretty darn good to me no need to overdo it each bites gonna have a lot of action my next layer is often chopped raw red bell pepper but I was at the store today at the Latin market and they had these roasted New Mexico peppers I'm gonna use a few of those instead they're so tasty and they did all the work for me and we'll start chopping them up the core on these is usually up near the stem here so I just kind of cut the ends off and that'll work chop them up as small as you want like this let's sprinkle on on these peppers yum 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 next up a little salty surprise olives olives are pretty salty but we're using quite a small amount we're just gonna chop up a few olives we're using it just as a condiment layer number six layer six all right now that's a gringo ingredient I think the entire concept of a seven layer dip is already pretty gringoed are you ready for layer number seven we're gonna use our cheese sauce we have a recipe in the book that's a little creamy chipotle sauce that you can make but I'm just gonna make a really fast easy cheese sauce this layer is optional. Throw in some regular old room temp water. Our cheese sauce mix, you don't have to measure any of this. You just put an, as much cheese sauce mix as it takes. Yes, you can get this at wellyourworld.com. It is our most popular product and so, so good. It's worth it. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of cashews. If you read the label on our cheese sauce, my recommended recipe, I add a little bit of cashews and I'll throw in just one of these mild dried chili pods to give it a little bit of a nacho cheese flavor. Okay, I started blending it up, but it still just looks liquidy. So you just add more cheese sauce until it's as thick as you want it to be. No measuring needed. 
All right, we are almost done this dip, but before we do that, you want me to show you how to make some really simple, tasty tortilla chips with crunch, but no oil? Dill, are you gonna cut those into perfect triangles? No, just leave them whole, save time, don't go to so much trouble, we're just gonna throw these right on the oven rack. I do find that the best corn chips are the thinnest possible tortillas. When eaten as just tortillas are not very good, to be honest. They are SOS free, there's no added salt, there's no added oil, obviously, and all I do is get the oven going at 350, throw them right on here boom 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 throw it in there and it just watch it if you haven't done this a few times yet and you don't know your oven just keep your eye on it this is the brand Arizona brand that I use but I don't know that you're gonna be able to find them everywhere so just find a thin tortilla no big deal and use corn because the flour tortilla is gonna definitely have a lot of added fat okay while those are going let's finish this dip this is layer number seven folks are you ready whoa it's optional you don't have to do this but it makes it really pretty too and it tastes amazing so you know what about an eighth layer you think we could do an eighth layer. Eight layers? Eight layers. Let's chop up some green onions. Maybe just the green parts. Oh, the eighth layer of the world. Unbelievable. The world's eight layers. Get it? That was the seven wonders joke. I got it. It wasn't that great. Look at these beautiful chips. Oh, don't dip right into the dip. What if your chip breaks? It's disrespectful. The, to you're the group. supposed to dip right into the dip. You can't dip right into the dip. You need to get a spoonful. Oh, all the layers are in there. Mmm. Wow. So much happening. I love it. This will keep in the fridge overnight just fine. Mm, dang, this is so good. I love this dip. Well, once the first crater is gone, then you just go at it with the chips. Now it's appropriate to just dip? Yeah. Would it up? <laughs> Everybody's gonna be watching me and I'm gonna be like picking out the chips. Sorry, sorry. And I'm gonna get in here and it breaks again. Sometimes the chip will break three times and it's the most embarrassing thing. Be an adult and use a plate. So, so good. Are you ready for a taste, Reebs? Oh, heck yeah. You waiting for some chips, man? Yes, I am. You can also put them on air fry, but you have to super babysit them then. I like air fry for the thicker ones. It's a little more forgiving. Mm -hmm. I just keep this whole bag in the freezer and they do split apart pretty well to just throw into the oven for the baking step. Well, ring a Dang, what do you know? I like to pre-break my chips. Watch how it's done though. Okay, let's get in here. Uh oh, what happened and there? Then, I what do my ears deceive me? Because my eyes sure don't. <laughs> and then you take this one and you just like salvage it a yep. little. Yep. Oh, oh, another break. How about that? <laughs> the old two break. Boy, it hurts, doesn't it? And everybody's watching you and they're like, well, where's she from? <laughs> Midwest. <laughs> So good, it's like a restaurant quality meal right there. Every single layer adds so much flavor, so we didn't have to do too much to each layer. There's just so much goodness right here. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a delicious, healthy eight layer dip. The recipe is down below, and if you like it, I hope you'll support us by purchasing our cookbooks or our other food products. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.